good evening viewers and our followers um, hearty welcome from us the women talk team and i just like to apologize dash has had some um, unforeseen um, um, appointments which i had to to attend to so i'll be hosting us tonight and uh, i hope you all had an excellent weekend and um, that the next week will be will be superb Tonight we will be we'll viewing the uh, Peugeot 208, and after that we will be um, having a uh, video on the dish. Um, had a excellent interview with um, one of the icons in the in the in our in our world, and that's Devi Sangri Govinda, which I think you guys will, will thoroughly enjoy. So uh, without further ado. Um, I'm going to switch you over to the Peugeot video. Just before I do that, please remember to register on, on the site because if you haven't registered, you won't come into contention for the lucky draw. And that will be done after the, the, the video for, with uh, Devi Sangri Governor. Enjoy the, uh, the, the Peugeot 208 and um, the video with Devi Sangri Governor. Hi, lovely ladies and gents. Today in Talk the Talk, we are discussing the Peugeot 208 with our CEO, product specialist, and our very own car encyclopedia, Andre Potgitter. Welcome, Andre. Hi, Dish. Thank you, and good evening, uh, listeners and uh, followers. Well, now, while the Peugeot 208 is one of the contenders in the premium light car space, it remains a chic little offering and sales of, of well, light-sized cars aren't exactly at the peak right now, particularly at the upper level of the segment, but there's still a place for something with a small footprint and a stylish interior that's aimed at metropolitans with a thirst for Euro-chic items. Andre, can you tell us more about the safety features of the 208? Yes, there's um, 208 um, Peugeot. One of those is one of those vehicles that you have to drive to really appreciate the car. Um, it is um, the build quality of the Peugeot is brilliant, fully imported vehicle, and um, the care they take to 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 put the vehicle together is is absolutely brilliant. And the vehicle comes packed with a a a lot of standard features. Um, the safety features that we that we get on the vehicle um, is your ABS systems. You get your um, um, ISO fix seats uh, placings at the back, where you can have two two baby seats at the back of the vehicle, um, which is very very important for our ladies. And with the little ones, you get the um, electric child lock system which is um, needed and in South Africa with everybody um, being in the hype with the corona and all of that, it's important that we make sure that the people in the cars also safe to the max. The vehicle comes with six airbags standard, uh, two front, two side, two curtain bags, uh, which protects everybody that's driving in the vehicle. Um, on the um, central locking standard in the vehicle, um, and then as well as a multifunction steering wheel, which um, which um, I'll come to a bit later when we when we get to the rest of the vehicles. Okay, and what about um, the power and economy of the car? 
Elko, the 208, there's two, two versions of them. You've got the, both of them is 1.2 liters, three cylinder motor cars. It's 1,199 cc's. Uh, the one is a non-turbo version. The other one is a turbo version. It's called the GT line. And then the power of the two is the, the, the normal 1.2 three cylinder is 60 kilowatts at 5,750 um, RPMs. And the um, Newton meters is 118 Newton meters of torque on that specific vehicle. Mm-hmm. I'll get to the fuel consumption just now. The other one is a, is a, is a little spunky car. It's got 81 kilowatts, which is very, very good for a 1.2 three-cylinder motor, and that's at 5,500. But the impressive part, again, is the 205 newton meters of torque at 1,500 RPMs, which make it an absolute delight to drive. You can go into the top gear of the vehicle, and you can cruise um, with ease without even changing gears. And obviously the power to mass ratio is brilliant for the fuel consumption. And then coming to the fuel consumption, um, the um, 1.2 non-turbo version gives an estimate um, combined fuel consumption of about 4.3 liters per 100 kilometers, which is way over 20 kilometers on a, on a liter. And that's Combined. If you just do town, it's a little bit heavier. But if you if you do um, open road driving, then you get to under four liters per hundred. Now the little quicker one, the one with the turbo, is not far off. That one comes in at four point eight um, liters per hundred, which is still over twenty kilometers uh, per liter. But you've got the oomph and the performance and the acceleration. So that is really a little spunky car to drive. The fuel tank on these vehicles, both of them have got a 50-litre fuel tank. And on a combined cycle, keeping to the speed limit, you're going to do over a 1,000 kilometres in this little car based on town driving as well as some open road. Sure, that that sounds really, really powerful for a small little um, spunky car like that. (laughs) You'll never say that. But what, what, what comes standard? What's the standard equipment on this car, Andre? Yes, standard features because the South African market, we are we we love to have vehicles with all the bells and whistles. Overseas, you order them and you buy them and you order literally as you want, cigarette light, uh, CD, whatever. But these vehicles come standard with uh, with quite a bit of features. Um, very nice feature that I like is a seven inch inch touch screen, uh, AM FM radio system with blue with Bluetooth, as well as a USB Apple loading function. Now, these are things that some of the competitors in this price range, definitely you will pay extra. CarPlay is also standard, and you've got an upgraded six-speaker sound system, which is divine for the youngsters, and they will definitely be testing this out um, quite a bit. The boot size of the vehicle is 311 liters, which is not massive, but for two people going away, it's really more than enough. And then for the sporty guys, the guys want to take a little bit bigger stuff. When you fold down your seat, you're looking at over 1,100 liters of pack of boot space. And that is more than enough for, for a lot of people. One other thing which, are, which, is, which is a great plus in this vehicle is the fact that it's got progressive um, um, cruise control on the vehicle, and that with the um, with the f- speed limits and fuel prices, and those things definitely will help us with the with the um, running cost of the vehicle. Last but not least, and which is very handy, is the onboard computer that comes with a vehicle, which displays a various amount of, of information that you can use um, on a daily basis. Oh. So, um, what uh, overall, Andre? What what's your opinion um, with regard to the ride and the feel of the Peugeot? Peugeot two hundred eight is definitely a vehicle with a French flair. It's got electric power steering, which gives you a very light steering while driving very slow. The faster you drive, the harder the steering gets. That is just another safety feature. So while doing. 50 or 40 or 50 k's an hour, you can literally drive it with with one hand, 
When you start doing open drive driving, 100, 110, then the steering is a bit, it's a bit harder, but it gives you a, a precise feel on what's happening to the road. The, the ride comfort, the, the softness of the ride is brilliant. The seating, uh, the, the, the cushions on the seat, your suspension, your tire sizes, all have been developed and designed so that you get the ultimate comfort and luxury while driving and maneuvering this little car around, not little, this medium-sized car around town. And then um, one last thing that I'd like to say is the, the warranty, the vehicle comes, all, all two of them, the, 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 the 60 kilowatt as well as the 81 kilowatt comes with a five-year, 100,000 service plan, five-year, 100,000 manufacturer's warranty, and then a five-year, 100,000 kilometer roadside assistance assistance which is phenomenal for vehicle included in this price with the build quality that you get oh, that that's really that is quite impressive but just one last question andre um you talked a little bit about uh the car being perfect for students and um uh, you know that category of uh, um uh, consumers for the Peugeot 208 what about uh about who else would this car suit um, would an older person, retired ladies, uh, that type of thing, would, would this car be a, a good buy for them as well? I say, I mean, with the five-year warranty as well, that might might be a good. I don't know. What's your opinion on that? Yes, I think I think this is the this is one of the ultimate second cars you can have in a garage. Uh, if you've got a nice 4x4 or big SUV or microbus or panel big van of that this is definitely one of the ultimate vehicles it's big enough to carry four grown-ups so if if you mm -hmm. two people in the house you can you can have it as a, a two people with 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 your um, enough space um in the boot for you and then the ladies definitely the ride comfort this the the, the the visibility while driving this vehicle doesn't have a lot of blind spots, so it is definitely up for me. I will definitely advise people that um, that would like to buy a vehicle that is that is superbly put together, very very efficient to run, comes with all these standard features for five years, and then it's got massive safety features. Um, I think I will advise this for any lady or any student or, or retired people to buy a vehicle like this. Because uh, when you, when we retire, we have to look at, at expenses, yes. and this vehicle is definitely one that will uh, not not break the bank while owning it. Nice. Thank you so much, Andre, for that. We appreciate your input. And there you have it, ladies and gents. This car carries an impressive price tag against the cars we see as its uh, our main competitor. So please feel free to contact us on the number you see on the screen below or email sales at womantalk.co.za or you can even visit www.womantalk.co.za and you can be sure to negotiate yourself a decent deal with our Peugeot people. Thank you very much for joining us and we will catch you in the next episode of Talk the talk with me, Desh Bechen. Welcome, Women Talk viewers, and thank you for watching. Devi Sankri Govinda holds a profound belief in the pursuit of truth. The courage and humanity of her work was deeply admired on carte blanche, where her bold, brave, and fearless reporting caught the eye of millions. Even though on the front line of some life-threatening situations, let's not forget that Devi is also an almost typical Indian mummy and wife and a self-made chef. If you follow Devi on social media, trust me, you are in for a laugh a day with her entertaining memes and enthusiastic sense of humor, especially in our current somewhat somber state of affairs. Devi also displays a selfless devotion for her role as a dedicated and devoted South African citizen. Many that know me also knows that this will prove to be a very special interview because I look up to Devi immensely and I am a fan professionally. 
Devi is the one and only reason I aspire to be a journalist. So welcome, Devi, and thank you so very much for chatting to me. And I hope that your dynamic voice will help me to further drive, no pun intended, my message of woman empowerment <laughs> in motoring South Africa. You are way, way, way too kind, but thank you for those lovely words. <laughs> You're welcome, Devi. Uh, so we decided that we're just going to have a uh, a discussion or chat about motor vehicles and cars. So I'm just going to first and foremost ask you, um, what do you think of an initiative like Women Talk Motoring Magazine um, can be a useful tool in motoring South Africa? Can it be a motoring uh, a tool in South Africa and, you know, try and empower women? So, yeah. Absolutely, because... I think for a very long time, especially when it came to, to motor vehicles, women always deferred those decisions to husbands, fathers, and brothers. So for me, having a very specific kind of portal that uh, assists females to make informed decisions, it can only be a good thing because it takes you to a whole different kind of empowerment level. Because it's fantastic to choose your own car, it's fantastic to do the research by yourself, and in the end, to make a decided decision. So um, any initiative that makes people stronger, better, faster, <laughs> work, it works. Tell us about the, we, we had a conversation um, last week on the phone about the, the first time that you actually bought a car. Um, how did you go about doing that? Did you take your husband's or father's or brother's opinion or did you do this all by yourself? I didn't take anybody's opinion. You know, I, I, I've always tended to rely on my own judgment. I've just always been like that. But the first time I had to buy a car, I remember I had to do it in a bit of a rush because I, I got this local teaching position at a school and I needed to have a car and I needed to do it very, very quickly. And I remember... I grew up in Amzunto and Fazul Natal, and one of the um, the bigger dealerships was a Mazda dealership. So I grew up in a home where we always had Mazda. So for me, it was the automatic choice. But I chose the vehicle on my own because I thought I, I, I knew enough. I did the research very quickly, made a few phone calls, and I was ready to purchase. Um, I like that. I like being able to make my own decisions. But ne I never ever make those guts, like those knee-jerk rea reactions or decisions. Even if I'm buying kettle, I'll research it <laughs> for days. So that I know when I get that kettle, it's the best kettle for the budget yes. that I have. Yes, absolutely. And um, so, so Debbie, how do you think that our dealerships could improve by offering services that could possibly equip women to make their own decisions when buying a car? So the one thing that has never, ever faced me is that whole debate around whether you should have more female salespeople. I think there should be more female salespeople anyway, but just like you should have you know, an, almost an equal amount of female CEOs compared to male CEOs. That's the only reason I'm even saying that. So if I think about dealerships, um, I think dealerships over the last couple of years are more attuned to the needs of a uh, working woman, whether you're a mom, single, uh, married, uh, what, whatever it is. So they've, you know, for a, to a large extent, what they've done is that they've made the process faster. So even when it comes to a service, and just fine, things are a lot faster. The car goes in, it happens, it drops you back off at work, it gets done, you come back, boom, done. Anything that takes less time is exactly what it what will work, especially for working women and for women who are running their own businesses. Um, I don't like tailoring products specifically for females, especially when it comes to cars. Nothing irritates me more. Because that's like saying, because you're a girl, then you must like this. And then that's taking the decision away from me. And more often yep. than not, it will be a group of guys deciding what lady products. No, yeah. I don't want <laughs> lady products. I'll, I'll choose my own product. You just show me what's available and I'll choose what I need from there. So I think dealerships have actually, have actually done a lot. They, they have. When I walk into a dealership, I don't ever feel like I know less. And salespeople don't make me feel like I'm stupid. And I don't think it's just me. Because you know when I walk into dealership, what happens? I can even people walk backwards because they think I'm there to do <laughs> an expose. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. So, so I think maybe it may be different, but I've never ever felt that I was undermined. And um, 
And I think people generally find more free to answer all kinds of questions. Yes. And I always felt sorry for the sales guys I've had to deal with over the years and buying cars. I mean, the number of questions I would either phone through or email through or WhatsApp through <laughs> before I made the decision. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can, I actually just uh, for a moment there put myself in a, in that position of a sales rep and, and just watching you come through the door. My God, I would run to the dealer principal's office immediately. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so David, just a, a very light, maybe light-hearted question. So, do you actually check your own oil and water? No, <laughs> no. no, I've never done that. In okay. my older, in my very, like, I think maybe about thirty years ago, we, mm -hmm. it was I used to be able to do all of that. My dad taught my sister and I how to do those things. So if yeah, I used to, to but not the anymore. Fuel station? Do you actually like the 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 fuel the 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 attendant or the um, the guy that's filling your petrol? Do you ever say to him like, um, uh, or when he says oil and water, do you say okay, fine, now yeah, check it? I always say it's fine because I think with cars now you've got the gauge and the gauge tells yes. you if it's fine. Yes. <laughs> and I'm always always in a little bit of a rush, but uh, I I just use the opportunity when I fill petrol. Just have a chat uh, with the picture of and you can see what's happening in July. I mean, there's specific garages I go to because of specific picture attendance. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it's a way for me to just to just touch base. But I do walk around my car to hypnotize myself. I do that. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's good to hear. So K, K for T3 is still stuck in my head. Before you drive, just <laughs> do a quick walk around and go have a look. I still do that. Good girl. <laughs> and then, um, well, I'm going to ask, we, we often have these workshops where we are, um, we empower women, educate women on how to change your tire. I mean, at any point, in any given point, you could be in a situation, um, especially if you don't have um, an insurance or that type of thing, um, you know, to change your own tire. So we have these workshops nationally to teach women how to do this. Uh, do you know how to change your tire? I used to know how to change my tire. Okay. Uh, so here are the early days, right? You, you buy vehicles that are always second hand, third hand, fourth hand or whatever. And, you know, you always didn't have a lot of money and yeah. it, you needed to be able to be more hands on with your vehicle then. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I did know how to change a tire because I, I was always traveling by myself. Right. Um, so I learned how to do that. I have not changed a tire or attempted to change a tire in a very long time. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Because now, now the tires have these sensors that tell you when you're not feeling well. <laughs> yeah, we so you, we, we very, very I mean, good. even though the um, I mean, it's not just the premium brands. Um, it, it's basically even entry level cars now that has these yeah. options. So yeah, I, you know, um, at the end of the day, not everybody though can afford these cars. So we we've got to uh, uh, educate women in any case, you know, on how to do these things, but. Yeah, your, 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 I won't say excuse, your explanation makes sense. <laughs> so tell me, Devi, do you actually have road rage and how do you handle that? I am such a calm driver. So I have this thing. I, I'm happy to let anybody in front of me. I'm okay with that. Because there's a lot of no road rage and I can understand where it comes from. But especially with taxis, people complain about taxis a lot. I have a completely different standpoint. Taxis move hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people across the country every single day. Um, there's an excess of 10 people in a, in a taxi. I would rather that guy goes in front of me because he's got to get those people to work. So I have no road rage. I've never ever thrown a zap sign at anybody. Um, I may sometimes just say a bad word under my breath if, if I'm really irritated, but I'm a very calm driver generally because I would rather, if people are behaving badly, I would rather that idiot is in front of me as opposed to behind me because I want him where I can see him. <laughs> that sounds like the Davy I know and love. Yeah. <laughs> um, Davy, what is your dream car and why? Okay, so I'm not one of those petrol heads that has uh, like one of those really big fancy fancy names for sure, Ferrari or whatever as a dream car. I've always just liked small cars. I'm a very small person. <laughs> and I always found those, I call them four times four cars. <laughs> 
a, a bit of a climb in for me. I need to like almost climb into it. And I drive with a cushion. I sit on a cushion. So it doesn't matter how fancy the car is. And even if the seats are el- electronic seats that have settings, even at the highest setting, it's still not high enough for me. So I always, I drive with a cushion. Um, so my dream car, I'm actually driving. Uh, I have a, a 1P5 that I purchased at the beginning of the year, and it's my dream car. I love it to pieces. It's small, it's compact. I had a 235i before this. Also a really lovely car, but I'm in love with my car. But now I just look at it lovingly in the garage. Um, <laughs> because I'm not, I haven't left the house in almost six weeks. I haven't gone anywhere. So who's doing your grocery shopping? My husband goes every 10 days. Sometimes okay. maybe 12 days. And okay. uh, we've discovered a lot of free shopping apps where delivery yeah. is, is free. Yes. There's, there's a lot of that. It's so a safe one. Uh, yeah, that's basically what we've been doing. But we're just, I think, smart with the groceries and how we organize what. I, I've seen your, I've been keeping up with your, your food um, um, uh, selfies or food, I don't know what they call, but yeah, they, they look stunning. I, in fact, recently you posted some uh, uh, chicken wings that you did, and I said, I'm going to try it banting style, and I did, and it came out. Okay, recipe. Fabulous. It was really Yeah, it's a lovely recipe. So you can always, I mean, leaving the field of journalism, I mean, you can just become a chef, right? I'm trying to um I'm trying to fish here as to what are you up to and what are you actually going to be doing. So I resigned from Car Plant at the end of January after 18 fantastic, amazing, wonderful years. I would have happily stayed on for even longer. Yes. But I think I kind of reached a point where I thought, well, what is my new next? Yes. Um my kids are older, my daughter's supposed to be going to America on a scholarship this year. Let's see what yes. happens. And that may possibly be delayed. Yeah, so I'm busy working on a new television project. And that's all I can say. I'm just not going to be doing <laughs> anything anytime okay. soon. No, I mean, I'm really excited to see what it is. Uh, in fact, when you when you left, it, it was a surprise to many, especially myself, yeah. I say. But I remembered Oprah is my other mentor. She's my other, the other person that I look up to. You're my local look up to person, okay? So, <laughs> so uh, when, when Oprah left uh, the show after 25 years, and she just said that it was time, I'm going to bow out gracefully and that's exactly what you did so good mm-hmm. to you and well done and we are still following you we i think everyone's just really anxious to see whose door you're going to be knocking on next <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah that won't change <laughs> no. so debbie uh let's now not be super feminist and get back to our motoring talk here but let's not be super feminist as i said earlier and um Let's talk about who you think are better drivers, men or women? Oh, definitely women. I don't even have to think about the answer to that question. 100% women, we are better drivers. Uh, some people say we're more hesitant on the road, and that's also not a good thing to be hesitant, because uh, some people think like 20 times we go switching lanes and then, you know, there is that. We've all driven behind people who do that. That's not yes. nice. But I think we're much better drivers. I think there's almost an, a sixth sense that we have when we drive. We genuinely care about other people's lives. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, JP. Um, Is there anything you want to add in terms of empowerment in women in South Africa? Um, anything, anything that you'd like to add to this conversation and for our readers and followers? For all the empowering times that we say that we are in now, compared to the times our grandmothers and our mothers lived in, I still think that to a large extent, we always second guess ourselves. We're not confident enough. Um, We know it, uh, the opportunities are certainly there. And we're gonna find now with COVID-19 that we're going to have to dig really, really deep to move ourselves forward. And I've just been saying to everybody, please just use this opportunity of COVID-19 to just look inward, find that inner strength because you have it, it's there. Maybe you didn't say hello to it for a long time and it's time to shine. Now's the time to shine. No, absolutely. I think uh, you you are an example of that, but your daughter, Kayuri, so you have a direct 
impact on someone's life and that's your daughter i've been following her for ages now and i'm so proud i mean wherever i go and people say well you are sick and you know um coming from a background where we didn't even have access to driving cars until 94 whatever the case might be but um you the you know you i said well there's an indian chick that's playing golf. I mean, many people ask me to meet them, our dealer principals or uh, manufacturing OEMs, uh, CEOs, MDs, you know, having a, a game of golf and they're like, join us on the field or send us these invites. And I'm like, I don't know how to play golf, but I know an Indian chick that represents South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, you are a, an example of woman empowerment, of woman can do anything, and your daughter is just also a true example of that. So, Debbie, I'd like to wish you all the best, and I'd like to thank you so much for giving me your time. I know that you are very busy. Uh, even though uh, people say that this is not a busy time, we should look inward and, and, and all of that. I, I am very busy, I must admit. And I've never been busier. <laughs> I always thought that I've been busy. This has been the most busiest time for me ever, which is good. Good. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Davy. You just have- You're very welcome. Thank you very much. So, guys, Davy Sankri Govinda, the name that I am most familiar with in my media profession, she's my inspiration my mentor, and yes, through her dedication and hard work, she has taught me that great things never come from comfort zones, and more significantly, don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're done. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Desh, for the, for the excellent interview you and uh, Devi Sangri Govinda had. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm sure the, the, the viewers and our followers enjoyed it just as much. Um, now for the, for the next exciting um, uh, event on, on our eve for the evening, and it is the lucky draw, and we're going to go straight to our our producer and let him do the draw for us. Um, please, if we can have the lucky draw now. Oh, congratulations. We've got a mobile um, person that, that clicked on the mobile, the winner, the cell number ending at 6240. We will be in contact with you tomorrow morning and congratulations. Um, we hope this is an inspiration to all the other viewers and to tell your friends that they must please log in every week. And then from us, the Women Talk team, um, thank you very much for for viewing the, the event this evening and please um, be safe keep to the rules especially the lockdown rules and we look forward to seeing you guys next week on the women talk show thank you have a good evening <laughs>